to, to calm down. Now, the way that I look at it is, here's, here's kind of the, the palm here and, and the fingers, and they've all got to uh, be stretched. You know, if you use a muscle, if you, you use it especially in a restrictive motion, in a, in a motion that requires the tension, you're going to have to stretch it out and so you can get blood back in there. Now, I've been thinking about my whole body as, like, this is my palm, you know, and here's my fingers. So I've been, you know, if you spend a lot of time, if you look at yourself in a mirror, and I would say, please get a mirror, you know, look at yourself, you know, if you, if you don't like the way you look, put a bag over your face. <laughs> please look at your body. Please look at your body and see what's starting to get hung up a little bit, you know. Because I got a real hung up, you know, I had neck problems, arm problems. So right afterwards, you know, I, I do a lot of this on stage. And I'm, I'm hunched over sometimes. So what do you do? What what would seem like I would need to do? You know, I, I just stand like this sometimes, you know, feel the electricity kind of say, oh gosh, I've been stuck in here a while. And then every time, every day, you know, I just get this is really good for your for your shoulder. Wow position. Lately, it's been uh, it's been in here. So I get these two chairs, and I stand on my head with my shoulders like touching here. And just stand on the chair so that the weight comes. It's very important to learn how to relax if you're going to play a musical instrument or or stretch. Hopefully, you can do both. If you stretch and relax and breathe at the same time, it's very important. And when you start stretching and relaxing and breathing with your body, it's amazing what happens to your music. Your sense of rhythm starts to, to breathe. And that's what it's all about. It doesn't really matter how fast you play or what you play or what the harmony is or what the composition is. It's, it's whether or not it grooves, right? <laughs> and the whole groove thing is, is a breathing of a tempo, rhythmic intonation. When we talk of intonation, what do we mean? What's, what is intonation? How to. Okay, what does that mean? It's in relation. It's like the strings in relation to each other. Okay, let's get down to brass tacks. What do you mean by that? Frequency, right? Yeah. So if you're playing at A440 and your friend's playing at A442, you're going to get a You're going to get the different speed. That's why when two strings aren't in tune, you get a. Well, if you got a, if you got five happening per second, that's the difference between the frequencies. So you play a 440 and a 445, or whatever. What is rhythm? It's a frequency too, isn't it? Only it's going to happen slower. What do we hear? We hear 20, roughly 20 hertz. To what? 20, uh, something like that, right? That's our range of hearing. Okay, well, what if something happens 10 hertz? What do we perceive that is as? And then if we slow it down and we get to six, my Zell's metronome 60, what's that? It's one per second. So what is rhythm? It's the same darn thing. So if you're grooving, you know, to a metronome, you aren't really going with the metronome. You're using the metronome as a marker. You see what I'm trying to say? You can go right with the metronome and be just perfectly in intonated, perfectly in tune with that machine. <laughs> Who wants to be in tune with the dark machine? <laughs> you want to be in tune with something that's alive. So your rhythm's got to be breathing. And so you know, that's one thing that I just wanted to say that I've been learning lately. It's extremely important to, to communicate what you're thinking and feeling. That you breathe. You say, hey, here I am. I have the breath of life. And this is coming through my sense of rhythm. So a study of that is just as important as, as learning how to go with that. Thank you very much.